As part of our formative years as children, we've been raised to interpret and expect patterns, be it through fitting blocks through slits of wood in elementary school, or even our parents' faces. So naturally, it would make sense that we would fear the inverse of it, the unknown. And what a greater representation of the unknown than the very waters that surround us. Hidden deep within Earth's largest graveyard lies ancient secrets hidden to even today's modern sciences. Those depths hold more than the bones of lost wayfarers and sailors alike, be it the iconic anglerfish with its sharp maw or the colossal squids found off the coast of Japan. These creatures have inspired artists and writers alike, earthing tales of eldritch horrors slumbering deep within Earth's oceans, waiting for some witless, unfortunate soul to awaken them, unleashing mythical Armageddon. And let me tell you, I don't want to be the guy to wake up a Cthulhu from his nap. Tonight at 11 minutes to midnight, I have decided to do a deep dive into Georgia's local folklore, exploring the unexplainable, the weird, and the unknown. My name's Andy and I am a self-proclaimed investigator in all things supernatural and esoteric phenomenon. From a young age, I've always been interested in otherworldly creatures or fantastical things. But like Scully from X-Files, I've always kept a healthy dose of skepticism when researching these topics. I don't feel like I'm in a comfortable position to definitively say that these conspiracies are real. However, I do believe that the formation of these myths have a basis in reality. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the Altamaha, a fabled sea serpent that's rumored to be swimming in the marshlands near Darien, Georgia. Even till this day, there have been sightings and reports of the monster from local fishermen and just the locals of Darien as well. But is it some sort of mascot or some sort of unexplainable phenomenon that we are yet to discover? Before we speculate about the Altamaha or Alti known colloquially, I would like to talk a little bit about cryptozoology. Cryptozoology is the study of unknown and legendary beasts. Though the annals of cryptozoology are rife with unsubstantiated claims or amateur filmmakers publicizing their work, the legends themselves are seemingly immortal, being retold from generation to generation for hundreds of years. Father of cryptozoology Bernard Hovelmans once believed that there was no such thing as unknown animals that they were merely hidden until discovered through scientific classification. That sightings of such mystical beasts are often that of misunderstandment or fanciful thought. What was once mythical will inevitably become terrestrial. Though myths of UFOs, Sasquatch, and sea serpents still prevail to this day, are they all just some preamble to some unexplainable phenomenon that we have yet to discover? Be it nature, man-made, or otherworldly, we as a people and a society have a thirst for discovery to reach out beyond ourselves into the stars above, to explore the unknown, yet presented with this danger, we persevere. Though I leave deep sea exploration to braver men than I, I've always been fascinated by Earth's oceans and the depths and mysteries that lie within. Be it the countless shipwrecks, deserted ghost ships, or mythical monsters, the unexplainable and the strange ferocity of nature is apparent, that sea travel can be dangerous. Using materials carved from Earth, humans have bent Mother Nature's will in order to explore the far reaches of the globe. Though the virtue of exploration is a good one, there are those who have chosen to exploit nature's abundance and take what belongs to their fellow man. As the Americas were slowly being colonized by European and Spanish settlers, countless Native Americans were annexed from their ancestral homes through sordid and villainous means. However, their myths remain like ink dipped into the tapestry of time. For instance, to go back to Georgia, the Muskogee Creek tribe often spoke of these great serpents that would swim in the marshlands and riverways of southern Georgia. In the 1700s, Georgia was slowly being colonized by Scottish colonists, and with them bringing along the myth of the Loch Ness Monster. In particular, a majority of colonists came from Inverness, Scotland, home of this fabled Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster is rumored to be a large reptilian beast swimming in Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands. They say it has a large reptilian body with a dorsal fin at each side and a long snake-like head capable of protruding itself from the water as if it were some sort of submarine periscope. 
Myths like these have birthed the idiom Hickson Dracones, or Here Be Dragons, which warned early explorers of the perils they may face at the open sea. Though the sentiment was often used to sell fanciful maps or to warn travelers of turbulent waters, there are those who have hold that phrase more of a testament than literary metaphor. In 1826, on a crisp morning off the coast of St. Simon Island in Georgia, naval captain Delano witnessed his dragon. While conducting a routine trade mission, he saw a 70-foot long sea serpent with a circumference about that of a hogshead barrel. The captain told the Savannah Georgian that it moved its massive head, which was shaped like an alligator's, about 8 feet out of the water. In fact, this was the captain's second viewing of the creature. He only decided to tell the paper after seeing it for a second time because as a captain he was familiar with all types of whales and sea creatures. This monster stood out to him as being something so foreign. He saw it four years prior off the coast of Dubois Bar. Sea serpents at the time weren't off the mental lexicon of the denizens of Darien, Georgia, as local fishermen often would name their vessels the Sea Serpent. And let me tell you, I bet back then the barmaids there loved when some crusty sailor would come up to them and start romanticizing about their Sea Serpent. It made sense that these two creatures would take on similar characteristics, even in future sightings of the Altamaha. They had no point of reference back then other than the folklore and stories they would tell each other around the campfire. They didn't have the luxury of hundreds of years of foreknowledge. To look back and to say what, what you thought was magic was actually two magnetic rocks rubbing against each other. Often what we once thought was fantasy was actually scientific reality. 30 years ago, Hovelmans wrote an article in the journal Cryptozoology with the title The Metamorphosis of Unknown Animals into Fabulous Beasts and of Fabulous Beasts into Known Animals. He talks about how tales of legendary beasts are often later classified as common beasts. For instance, in Chinese folklore in the Han Dynasty in 138 BCE, the Mo Chimera was described as a cross between a giant panda and a chimera with a multitude of different animal limbs, but later classified in the 1800s to be a black and white Malayan taper. But this very account of the French expert who discovered it was proven to be false, as a lot of the improbable details found describing a Mo Chimera weren't found in a Malayan taper. In fact, in historic China, Malayan tapers weren't even inhabiting the place. Instead, the Mo's only proof of existence is one of ancient text wood blocks and it being ethno-known. Whether it be a form of modern sightings, legends, or ancient manuscripts, the term ethno-known simply means that the creature or entity or whatnot have you has some sort of prior knowledge before scientific discovery and classification. Something being ethno known is a basic tenet in cryptozoology. So will Alti remain ethno known? Maybe the very act of retelling these stories gives these creatures their power as they become ethereal beings of collective thought only to emerge when you're walking down a dark corridor or throwing away the trash at night, adding color to the dreariness of mundane reality. Thank you so much for tuning in to 11 Minutes to Midnight. For more episodes, please visit our 11 Alive streaming app on Roku and Fire Stick. Thanks again for watching.